Good morning. We are all about celebration today. Um, today is our Laity Sunday, and so we are celebrating our congregation and each and every one of you who make a part of our church life a joy to be around. So grab a hat, grab some beads. There's some squeakers in your pews. Um, they may look different. There's bubbles, so feel free to blow bubbles. Do everything that you will love to do. We want to make this a happy and joyous time. So when you hear something that you really like, use your squeaker. Take your hat off. Yeah, there you go. Blow your bubbles, because this is a day, and it's all about celebrating you. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Shelly now, and we're going to begin our worship. Did you see their pumpkins? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what are all these balloons and everything doing here? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah. Why? Why are they here? Um, because it's a party. It's a party. Yes, it is. It's a party. We're celebrating everybody. You, you, and you. Okay. And all those people out there, they're all laity. Do you know what laity is? It's not a big word. We don't use it too much, do we? It's all these people that do so many things for the church. What do you like about the church? Uh, what do you like about the church? Uh, I like celebrating. You do? Okay. What do you like about the church? I love it. You love it? But what, what's the one thing you like about it? The balloons. The balloons. You think we should have balloons every Sunday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to see about that. Well, um, the laity are all, all of us. And you know what I like about it? I like it that when you guys sing. I love it when you sing. Can you Jesus love me real quick? Okay. Can you help? Yeah. Jesus love me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to be strong. Okay, I love that. Now, I also love it when you guys smile. Can everybody give a big smile? Give it to all those people out there. How's that? <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. I like that smile. Okay, and I also like it when you guys wave. That's another part of helping the church out. So let's all wave at those people out there. Oh, they're waving back. How neat. Okay, so I like all these things. And you know what? You guys have just helped the church. You've done a really good job of helping the church. Because now we're all excited, and we think this is great, right? So we're going to celebrate all day today, and Xander thinks we should celebrate next week with the balloons. What do you guys think? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, okay. Okay, well, if you bow your head for a word of prayer, and then we'll let you go. Dear Lord, thank you for the kids in this church. They make the la make laity a continuing effort among us all. Bless us all and help us to rejoice in your church and your uh, Methodist wisdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, I have a thankful tree. Okay, Mrs. Gardner gave me a whole bunch of these, and I thought, who better to give to you? And there's that. Here, honey, here, honey, bud. Can you take, take those two to your brother? And those are two for you. Would your sister need any? Or not? Okay, you ready? Thank you. All right, um, we have several prayer concerns that I'll draw your attention to in the bulletin. Are there others that need to be added this morning? I'm going to also draw your attention to the announcements, which are all printed 
in your bulletin today, so be sure and take a look at those. We do have a Sunday school class starting this morning, so we want to be sure and pray for that as well. So let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we give you such thanks that you are there for us each and every day. The Bible tells us, Lord, to be fools for Christ, so help us, Lord, to step out of our comfort zones as we serve you, to be fools for you, to love you. We thank you, Lord, for the many gifts that you have bestowed upon us as a church. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that falls upon each and every one of us. And now, Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture today is from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 7, 12, 27 to 31. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of all of them. <clears throat> There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. <clears throat> all of you together are, the, are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are the apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. This ends the reading of the word. <clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Seth McCorkle, and I appreciate y'all being here for Celebrating Ladies Sunday. Um, this truly is a time to celebrate, um, time to review the year, things that we've accomplished, and an opportunity to look forward on what we can do in the future. Um, some of the big changes we've had is in our church structure. Um, I'm going to be talking about the uh, Area Ministry Committee and some of the things that we do and how that system actually works. I'll try to make it not too boring, and I'll try to make it understandable, because I get confused pretty easily on this one. Okay, so basically the Area Ministry Committee, we cover congregational care, worship, outreach, and missions, um, and then we're all broken down into subcategories. Um, on our team is Alice Denton. She is the Outreach Missions Chair. We have Ashley Copas. We have Craig Wellens. Debbie Alexander, who's the worship chair, Heidi Alexander, Rhonda Lertzma, Roberta Cook, and myself, the area minister chair, and Tom Moser, the congregational care chair. So basically, it's a group of nine of us, and we all share the responsibility for the, the congregation. Um, by putting these teams together, we can work together better, we can communicate better, because we are all one team. Um, one of the things that also lets us do is, as we have a, 
project going forward, we can reach out to the congregation and ask for assistance, knowledge. I mean, all of you have talents and stuff that maybe some of us don't have, so we'll reach out and say, hey, can you help us with this? Probably you, Tom. I'll be reaching out to you, so don't worry. We got one coming next week, so get prepared. So, as this team works together, if Debbie has a worship issue, we can discuss it as a team and come up with a solution. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that really helps. You don't have to have a separate meeting. You're having a meeting and you're discussing stuff and none of us know about it. It really has streamlined the meetings as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's great. Um, so I want to review um, some of our ministries we're looking at, or not ministries right now, some of the projects we're working on right now. We're going to get ready to go through a process of reviewing all of our ministries we have. Seeing what we can do to make them better. See if they're perfect the way they are. See if they fit our vision. Um, it's going to take some time to do that because we have a lot of ministries in this church. A lot of great things we do. Um, for the future, being disciples to me is all about getting outside of the walls of this building and trying to build relationships with other people. Um, we have a lot of opportunity to come up and help with that. We have the Bison Ridge apartments out there, the new people coming in, and they're building more. Um, we have the 10 plate apartments uptown being built. Um, I don't know if this is finalized yet or not, but um, I don't Sawmill Road, there's possibly a housing addition that's going to go up there. So we have a lot of changes going on in Elwood and a lot of opportunities for us to reach out and meet potential new people. They're coming to a town who don't know a church in Elwood. They don't know the people in Elwood. They don't know what businesses are, businesses are available here. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to walk out them doors and find a way to meet these people and make them feel comfortable in this town. Because really, that's what our goal is, is to be disciples, to reach out and talk to these people. Um, and make them feel welcome here. Make them feel welcome to come into these walls and worship with us. Um, so again, I want to make a little exciting for them. I want to make this church exciting for them. And do it through service, prayers, and relationships, which is our vision. And we need to get that banner hung back up there, because I miss that. <laughs> so really that's all I've got I hope it wasn't too terribly confusing the way our structure is set up now um, and I want to turn this over to Rhonda who's going to talk about outreach and missions there you go thank you Well, I noticed in our notes that we were supposed to be given two to three minutes, and I thought, my goodness, I've got six things to talk about, and I can talk three minutes on each one of these. So since I have to get to work, I will cut it short. Um, on the missions, one of the things, I'm, I'm going to talk about just the local missions. We have global missions also. Each of these six items I'm talking about, the ideas came from you. Each one, somebody came to the committee and said, I had this idea. What about this? And we did it, and it's been successful. The Live Nativity. It's probably been over 30 years since we started the Live Nativity. Um, if you don't know much about it, talk to the Alexanders. They have been involved from the, from the beginning. That's coming up. They need volunteers. Please support the Live Nativity. We have lots of people to come every year for that. The community meal. This is our 15th year. It's hard to believe it's been that long. And that was one of my ideas. And we, right now, we're serving 160 meals each week. Uh, on, on each week. Woo, that'd be awful. Each month, we're serving 160 meals. One of the things I wanted was for this to be a way for church members to get together and know each other. And I have become friends with so many of you that sit across the sanctuary that I probably wouldn't have known if this had not happened. So feel free to come, and thank you for your support for the community meal. 
Um, we started a new one. This was Debbie's idea. The schools last year had groups that supported their teachers. Uh, we know that sometimes that's an unappreciated occupation, uh, like a pharmacy tech by Facebook, I noticed. But <clears throat> Uh, the teachers are unappreciated, and so they had groups to support them. And so Debbie came up with the idea, let's be part of that supported group. And so she is heading that up this year. We're supporting the elementary school, and each month she will give them just a treat or tell them we're praying for them. And if you'd like to become involved with that, Debbie, I'm sure, would appreciate that. But that's, that's something new this year that Debbie came up with. Uh, laundry Day. Uh, again, on Facebook, I noticed that uh, my home county had uh, something called Laundry Love. And so I contacted them, and I tried to find out more about that. And Laundry Love is a national organization, and we're not part of that, just because I didn't want to go through all the paperwork. So we called it Laundry Day. But Laundry Love started when somebody asked a homeless person, what is it we can do to help you? And that person said, if I had clean clothes, people would treat me differently. So on our laundry day, what we do, we go up to the Lost Boys laundromat across from the uh, uh, hospital, and we have our church aprons full of quarters, and people come in, and we just put the quarters in the machines, and we talk to them. We furnish uh, soap if they want it, uh, and we have built a lot of new relationships with that. Some of the same people come each month. We do this the second Tuesday of each month. And so if you would like to do that, we'd love to have you come and help. Just put the quarters in the machines. Um, sometimes Seth takes the quarters out of the machines because they get stuck, and so he's always got tweezers taking them back out. Um, there was something else I was going to say about that, and I don't remember what it was right now. But we'd appreciate your help coming to the laundry day. Oh, I know what it was. One of the uh, people that come, as I was putting quarters in the machine, I bet that makes you feel like Santa Claus. And I thought about it, I thought, it does. You know, and, and you see the smiles on their face, and they're very appreciative. They said, thank you so much for doing this. The food box, Jim Abbey. He's the one that made the food box for us, and you can see all this food up here. Um, recently, Avonlea, Teresa, and I have been rotating weeks and making sure that that food box has something in it each day. There will, is a sign-up sheet in the back in the book. We'd love for more of you to sign up to help us with that. Uh, we do put food out there every day, and it is gone every day. So we, we've, I figured there's a couple groups that we're reaching out to. We're reaching out to families who need food. We're also reaching out to the homeless. So some of the food, you might need the uh, pop-up cans where they don't have anything to cook it. But if, I found a SpaghettiOs can on the step one day. So I'm sure it was some homeless person that came and got that and just opened it up and ate it right then. So when you're donating, think about both groups, something that they can eat instantly, and then some that have families that they need help with. Um, oh, Seth mentioned to me this morning, Harvest Market is going to help us with this. Uh, they have made a donation, and they said that they will help us and save food for us for the, the food box. So if you're out to harvest, make sure to thank uh, Brett Beeman for this. Uh, one last thing. Uh, this was Beth Mosier's idea, and that was a safe haven box, the baby box. This is the only one in Madison County. We were able to do it with an anonymous donation. But it was Beth's idea, something from this church, and our church will continue to support it by the maintenance each year. So all of these ideas have come from you, and I thank you very much. I'm looking forward to watching the video when I get home from work to see what everybody else has to say. Have a good day.
Good morning. So, as part of congregational care, I thought earlier this year we should reach out to the people who have used to come to church, um, we maybe haven't seen for a while, maybe because of COVID, maybe not. So, you know, there are a lot of people that we saw three years ago that we don't see today and um, in, in the pew. So, uh, I thought we should, you know, maybe reach out to them in some way or another uh, earlier this year. So, it so happened in June, um, uh, uh, we ended up doing this, but, you know, I thought we could send them a letter saying, you know, we miss them and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, we really want to do something a little bit more than that. Um, so we came up, I came up with an idea to, to, to take stuff to people. And so what we did, uh, Becky ordered these boxes online. And so we had a day where we um, put together these boxes uh, up there. And, um, and J John helped, and Sue Davis helped, and Avalee helped, and, and uh, um, Emma helped, and uh, we had another helper there too, I think, somewhere there. Um, but anyway, we had several people that put together this, and, and I didn't want to just put food in here that you could purchase. Um, it seemed to me, if we're going to take them to our family, our church family, we should have goodies made by the people who they, they know. So if you go back to that other slide, um, so instead of sending them a letter, we actually attach this, uh, we scrolled it and put it inside this, uh, uh, top of this. So if you can read that, I don't know, it says, we, your church family, just wanted you to know that we have missed you. The last two years of COVID have been tough on all of us, but hopefully now the ship, that ship has sailed. Uh, no more mass, just a friendly atmosphere to freely enjoy worshiping our God together. Now, if you can't read this, we have appointments available just to let you know. Uh, if you can't re really see that. Uh, uh, if you cannot enjoy these treats, please feel free to share them with your family, friends, and neighbors, because we took some of these to people who were diabetic, so we thought, well, they could share them with their family. Uh, they can also be frozen and enjoyed later. And I wrote down, they are not gluten-free, sugar-free, or guilt-free, and they weren't, um, but they were made with special love, as Christian love, by your church family members. And of course, Becky made monster cookies, Avali made peanut butter fudge, Lydia Rutherford made the cake pops, which she's made thousands of. Uh, uh, Sue Davis made cupcakes, and Ashley, our daughter, made the Buckeyes. So we put all that in there, and that day in, in June, we delivered 30 of these, 30 to 30 different families, people, individuals. Um, that one day it was surprising. We could deliver 30 of them in one day. They, they, everybody, we found everybody home. We had to make two or three trips out to do it, but but all of, everybody kind of helped. Um, to, to deliver these, and it was just, an, I thought it was a nice gesture to, for, for the, our family members who aren't here now, um, or hopefully we can have them come back, or hopefully they, they want to come back. So, so that, that, was, that was back in June, and then in, in September, what we did was we had our picnic, and we can go to that slideshow. Uh, we saw this slideshow before. Um, this was the picnic of September 18th, and it was just a way to get everybody together. And as I mentioned before, everybody that I asked to bring something brought something. Um, and I think that's really what makes uh, um, a congregation kind of special together if you do things together. And that's the whole point of this um, is to do things together. So uh, we actually had 57 people at this picnic. <laughs> 57, that's a lot of people. Uh, we had some guests uh, also, and um, we were just happy. It was a beautiful day, and uh, everybody got to come and, um, and enjoy. And then, of course, many of us took off right after the meal, um, and we went canoeing. And we're going to see, we're gonna see that, those pictures here in a second. And surprisingly enough, I didn't realize that there were that many people, but when we got to the canoe place, and we all got out of our cars, and we went up there, and we paid, and got our stuff to go canoeing, they take you on a bus and they take you up river so you can float back down. And we had 30 people on the bus. We had our own bus. The, the United Methodist Church had their own bus. They, they brought up a little bus and then they realized that wasn't big enough. They had to bring up a big bus and we were the only people on that bus that they took up to this spot. Um, so it was, it, it was really surprising. 30 people went canoeing from this church. Uh, I thought that was really pretty special. So um, 
So we had a great time. And, and what we're going to try to do is do something every quarter um, of the year um, as a church family. So the next quarter, I mean, coming up, will be live nativity. And so we all kind of need to kind of help with live nativity as a church family. We'll have a meal at lunchtime, and so that'll be a, t a time together. So we might ask you to bring something for that meal as well so we can all enjoy it and be part of that. And then we've had some other ideas. Uh, um, Seth, he likes to bowl, so we, maybe after the first of the year, we can put together a little uh, a bowling out, outing. And, and some of you might say, well, you know, I, I haven't bowled in 30 years. It doesn't matter. You know, if you have to, we'll bowl on. The, my, my grandkids are going to love to bowl, that's for sure, and, and your grandkids as well if they'll come. So we might put together a bowling thing after the first of the year, and if everybody can participate, even if you just came out and and supported the people who were bowling if you didn't want to bowl. Or we'll, we'll probably have a meal, because Methodists usually have a meal uh, with everything. So uh, we'll probably have a meal, but uh, we're looking at bowling. If you have an idea that, that would could kind of involve our whole church family, I would like for you to let me know, because you know what? We're looking for things we can do and, and as a family, and, and I think that's, that's important, and uh, so... That, that's kind of what's been going on this year and what we're looking at in the next six months. So thank you so much for participating. And my son, just in the last hour, my oldest boy just invited me to the Colts game, so I'm going to be leaving. Um, Diana, I'm sorry I'm going to miss your first lesson today in Latin, um, so I'm going to miss that, but uh, uh, I'm going to go vi visit my son, and we're going to go to the Colts game, so I thought I'd let you know why I'm leaving. Good morning. Um, that's a hard act to follow, let me tell you. But um, in the mornings, every morning, I start out with 10 things I'm thankful for. And, you know, it goes from different things, but that I'm thankful for. And I thought, you know, being over worship, there's a lot of things that I'm really thankful for. First of all, the main, main one is all of you laity people. I mean, you don't know how great you are, what you mean to me. And um, you're in my prayers usually every morning, so thank you very much for being there, being here. I'm also thankful for this building. I mean, it keeps us warm and cold, and it also, you know, it's just, it's a place that you can come and enjoy. And all the decorations um, that, uh, you, that she provided, that was, Jill provided, that was, it's great. Um, another thing that I'm really thankful for that's going to be sort of new, we're going to start fresh flowers on the altar every Sunday. I've already got it arranged, and the lady's ready to go. And uh, if you would like to donate, they are $50. And I know everybody thinks, oh, that's a lot. Well, flowers are just expensive, <laughs> you know. So if you would like to donate, please put your name on the um, back uh thing that has the, all everything you can do um, and we do have we do have money coming in for this so you know don't worry if you don't feel like donating that do something else um, I also I'm very very thankful being over worship that we have somebody like Shelly who can provide us music we got the choirs back I think that is just great and I'm very very thankful for the bell choir and for our beautiful sanctuary choir I'm also very, very thankful for all of you guys who read the scriptures, and I know sometimes they're long, but that reads the scriptures and the opening. You don't know how easy it is. I go up to some of you and say, would you mind reading? And you're, yes, 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 I will read, you know, and I, that, I'm so thankful for that every time. Um, I'm also thankful for Lester because he takes care of the ushers. He gets us coffee. And hopefully we'll get back into the donut holes. But today we have the cupcakes to celebrate a uh, party. Um, I'm also thankful for the new Sunday school that we're going to be starting up. I think that's going to be just great that we can get back into it. Maybe we can get the kids into a Sunday school also. I'm very, very thankful for the Bible studies. 
I always had wanted to be in a Bible study, and now that I can be in one every Wednesday morning, I'm just like, okay, it's Wednesday. I don't even mind getting up, and this girl hates to get up, let me tell you. I'm thankful for the children's message. It's a little scary sometimes when you have to focus on these little kids and stuff, but I'm very, very thankful for them. They make your day and the whole week. Um, these are a few of the 10, th- I think I went over 10, but anyway, these are my 10 things that I'm very thankful for in this church and in worship. I think that worship, is, it helps me every Sunday when I can come and be with you guys. It makes me a better, better person during the week, and some weeks I need that. So I, I'm thankful for you guys so much. Thank you very much. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited by the things that I've been hearing this morning. Um, It's always puzzled me. We can celebrate so many things so easily. We can go all out. We can wear T-shirts. We can have parties. We can yell, scream, clap, dance, whatever, for so, so many things. But when it comes to our faith, we tend to think we have to be Stoic? Is that the right word? Reserved? Um, I had a, a dear, dear friend, Janet Casterline, who was a pastor's wife. I know a lot of you knew her. Wonderful soul. She used to go around whenever we would have a big um, workshop or a conference meeting or an Emmaus meeting or something. She would go to tables that were laughing and having fun and she, and she was known to be a pastor's wife, and she would go up with the sternest face she could muster and say, you're having way too much fun. This is a church function. And I always thought, yeah, I should be able to smile my biggest and clap my hands or raise my hands, laugh, toot horns about my faith. It's the best thing in my life. Why not celebrate it? And I loved how many times I've heard the word family today. That's what we are. We need each other. And I got to tell you, it is so wonderful to have choir and bells back. Oh my goodness, such a hole in my life that that is filling up again. I love Psalms because enter into his presence with singing, sing before the Lord with joy, a lot, a lot of references about music and how it paints a col- different authors, but they paint very colorful pictures about God's opinion of music is the way I look at it. I think he likes it a lot. And he wants it to be a very joyful, uplifting part of our lives. I, when I think about music, I know that there's a, a different song that covers stages in my life. You're the same way. Like if you were, I don't know, anywhere and had a radio on or something and you heard dun 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 you would think of Christmas. Christmas. If you heard um, the happy birthday song, it would probably conjure a picture in your mind of a happy time, a joyful time. Celebrating kids, grandkids, wives, husbands, mothers, fathers. It's a very sense experience. Um, The most poignant ones for me, though, are the songs that have marked my faith journey. A song about Jesus can touch and open my spirit faster than anything. I connect with my faith through music. If I'm trying to pray to God, and I'm, I, sometimes I do this, I get a little involved, and I'm thinking, I'm talking around what I want to say, and I can't get my thoughts together, I'll stop and sing a little, and I always get my focus back. I connect with God through music, and thank goodness you guys do too. I have, over the years since I've been here, discussed with friends and cohorts who are also music directors, about how about 99% of the people in this congregation 
either read music or have studied music or have very substantial musical gifts. And they go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, that must be horrible. And I was always, what? Why is that horrible? I think it's great because you guys have a special appreciation for music, a love for music. And thank goodness you're willing to give your gifts of music when we need you. But that is just such a joy, such a joy. I did search in Psalms. I looked hard. I found stuff about trumpets and lyres. I didn't find a handbell in the entire book. I'm sorry, but I'm sure had they been invented, it would have been included. <laughs> we are, the handbells are meeting again, and I am so excited. We started Christmas music preparing for live nativity three weeks ago. That dun 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 dun, you will hear that this year. Hopefully more than once. A live nativity for sure, but hopefully maybe Christmas Eve too or something. I don't know. It's a wonderful group and we have a ball. Try to keep things light and fun. And we are, we're a close group and we really enjoy our faith music together. Same thing with choir. Oh my gosh, I miss them so much. Big hole in my life, big hole in my worship when we don't have the choir. I, I, are you guys glad to have a choir back too? Is it just me? Good, 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 good. Beautiful, sacrificing souls, bells and choir both, that come every Thursday for rehearsal. And we give of our, they are gifts, they don't like it when I say that, but we give of our gifts that God's given us to help this church every Sunday in our worship and to praise God's name and be a blessing for him. And I've had several people tell me that coming to rehearsals Thursday night, it's like a respite from the world. That's pretty close to the end of the week and we've, it's, we've had our work days, our family days, our hard days, our easy days, and then we come in Thursday night and we do that connecting to our faith, to our God, through music, and it's refreshing. It just feels wonderful. I know I'm tired when I leave this building on Thursday night, but I am refreshed. So we have lots of good things coming up, bells and choir. Please, 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 even if you don't know if you can ring a bell or sing a song, come and join us um, Thursday at 5.30 for bells. 7 o'clock for choir. We always have room for new people. We will love you immediately. Please come and join us. Thank you. Well, I'm Ted Moser, the chairman of the Ad Board. And as Seth mentioned, we recently uh, switched over to a simplified church structure, which... Uh, uh, I think we successfully uh, made that transition. Uh, it did cause some changes. Whereas we used to have 10 or 12 individual committees that were working independently, uh, they took all the ones that were mission-oriented and rolled those into the new ministries that Seth is running, and they took the uh, several ones that were business-oriented and rolled that into the ad board. So in our ad board meetings, um, we have specific sections where, uh, uh, where we'll first uh, look at uh, finance, and all the members of the ad board will become members of the finance committee. We discuss all the finance issues. Uh, then we close that section, and we open the trustees section, and all the ad board members become trustees committee members, and we work on trustees issues, and just work through the, work through the meetings that way. Uh, and I think it's been very successful. Um, one of the new changes that we did add to the business meeting was the time of listening and learning, 15 minutes at the beginning of each meeting, where we'll just pick a different topic, uh, whether it be something going on in the church, in the community, uh, with the Methodist church, with the nation, and just see if there's uh, anything there that we can just discuss and find out if there's a way that we can interact and maybe help relieve some of those issues. Uh, we also recently adopted 
the church protection, uh, the child protection policy, and that's going to cause a few changes uh, from the way that we've done things in the past, but it will assure that we have the safety of our youth here in the church uh, as one of our utmost uh, priorities. Our, uh, one of the things that we did notice, uh, because we have fewer people now in the ad board that's dealing with all the issues of the church, uh, sometimes our communication uh, needed to be improved. And if you looked at your uh, email for the service that was sent out Friday, we included the minutes of the last meeting so that everyone will have a chance to see exactly what was discussed during our ad board meetings. And so we're hoping that that's going to help uh, spread the word of what we're doing. But our meetings are open to anybody. They're at 6.30 on the second Wednesday of every month. And anybody that wants to come and listen is invited. And please do. If you uh, if you'd like to, the uh, other area that I'm involved with is a separate committee. It's the endowment committee, and you've probably heard this story many times. But Grace Knack was a member of our church, moved away, um, and then in her uh, will, she uh, willed a portion of her estate back to the church. Um, we were allowed to spend the interest off the money, but we could never touch the actual dollars that. Uh, that were uh, donated. So we had to uh, implement uh, an endowment, and that's what started the endowment. And when we did, we uh, wrote a set of bylaws that we adopted, and those bylaws specified that there'd be five members uh, of the endowment committee, five only. Uh, this year, uh, we've got Bev Austin, who's the president for 2022. I'm a member, John Moser's a member, uh, Sue Mitroff's a member, and so is Andy Denton. And those are, those are the five uh, that are uh, running it this year. Uh, one of the first uses of the funds uh, that was identified was to help the youth of the church with scholarships. And every year in the spring, we uh, solicit uh, applications for scholarships, and we consider uh, those here in the church. And uh, we've passed out a number of scholarships over the years. Um, Oh, recently, the trustees needed monies for uh, air conditioning repairs. If you're wondering why it's fairly hot in here in August and September, uh, we've got two units on the roof that really need to be replaced. We've got two units on the ground and the, on the east side that need to be replaced. So the endowment was petitioned, and we agreed to help fund uh, uh, part of the, uh, or all of the repairs when we figure out exactly what is going to be needed. Um, The, uh, the bylaws also specify that these funds uh, should not be used to just pay for the budgetary normal needs of the church. And they're supposed to be used for special ministries and expanding ministries. Uh, the last two years, we have uh, kind of stretched that a little bit from the standpoint that we, we thought COVID, with shutting down the sanctuary, um, which reduced the number of people who were attending, reduced the amount of giving, uh, presented a special problem. And so for the last two years, we have used some of those funds to help supplement the operations of the church, but that's just a short term. That's not gonna be a long-term solution. And the ad board is working hard to try to figure out exactly what we can do in the future to uh, balance our, our operations expenses with, with the giving that we have. Um, I, I think I can speak on behalf of uh, all the endowment committee members when um, I, I feel honored to be a uh, person that helps administer God's revenues for God's work. And I thank you. Good morning, my name is Tom Austin. I am Beverly Austin's husband, in case you don't know that. I am the chairperson of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Uh, members of the committee are Ted Moser, John Moser, Alice Denton, Marsha McCorkle, Avalee Wardwell, Manet Shettle, Reverend Roberta Cook, and myself. Uh, this committee has 
many different responsibilities, but in a nutshell, what does the committee do? The committee focuses on building strong relationships between staff and the congregation and between the congregation and the conference superintendent. The administrative function of the Staff Parish Relations Committee includes both leadership and management. Leadership is, in essence, the role of keeping an eye on the big picture of the church by remembering we are part of the body of Christ with a mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Management of the church is the role the committee takes as we tend to daily activities of the church so that details are taken care of and church strategies are implemented. But we are a church of many people from different walks of life, but the most important thing I want to do this morning is to celebrate our staff. I would like to recognize Jill Cole. If you'll please stand, Mrs. Cole. Jill is the administrative office assistant and one of the nicest ladies you'll ever meet. She'll do anything for you uh, at any time. So Jill, I thank you. Hello, I'm talking about you. Now you behave yourself. I'm still your boss. Just kidding. But she's one of the, she does wonderful work here at the church and I'm glad to have you on our staff. I would like to then recognize Shelly McKinley, our music director and fellow, fellow uh, advocate of Michael W. Smith, who I love very much, his music. Shelly, you're wonderful in the role that you play. You bring your heart and soul every Sunday to the music that you provide us. So I thank you so much for what you do for this church. Norm, Norm Alexander, although his wife did not recognize him during her speech, Norm is the caretaker of the church and Norm and I go back a long way. Nice guy, all around, good person, and uh, I can tell that young boy in the middle, you're lucky to have him as a grandpa. But I'm going to add another layer of recognition this morning. I would like to recognize Don Garner, who Don and Drake Mengelt, and I would recognize John Mosier. John's not here today, but those three individuals back there perform a vital function every Sunday morning here at church. So Drake and Don and John, wherever you are, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, my name is Marcia McCorkle, and I'm here to talk about the, the joys of the Trustees Committee. Uh, our uh, chairperson is John Mosher, and as Tom just said, he is not here today. The rest of the trustees are made up of Seth McCorkle, Tom Austin, Alice Denton, Ted Mosher, Manet Shaddle, Lester Smith, Am Emma Van Ness, and myself. Um, the trustees, if you're not familiar with what the trustees do, they're responsible for the upkeep of this magnificent building, the grounds, the lot next door, as well as the parsonage. So there's a lot to be done there, and there's always something that is either broken and needs to be fixed or has an opportunity to be upgraded. Some of the achievements so far this year from the trustees, um, they have replaced the light bulbs in the sanctuary, uh, a lot of the work they do, I guess I'll start by saying it kind of goes, sorry, kind of goes unnoticed. Um, so I, we want to highlight some of this. So replace the light bulbs in the sanctuary. Um, as was mentioned earlier, worked with the city. They're replacing, if you haven't noticed, the sidewalk out on the north side of the building. Uh, that was kind of a safety hazard out there, and it looks beautiful now. Uh, trimmed the tree on the small corner out here on the side of the parking lot before you go to pull out. It was kind of a dangerous corner there, so the tree was trimmed. Landscaping plants. So we did some landscaping last year. A few of the plants didn't kind of survive through the year, so those were replaced. 
The media center, as Tom said, talking about Don and the team back there, early in the year, we replaced the media center computer and the works back there that allows us to do Facebook and YouTube videos. Uh, also, mid-year, there was some waterproofing that was done to keep the elements from the inside. So that was, and that's kind of an ongoing with the building that we have here. The waterproofing seems to be an ongoing issue. They completed the annual parsonage inspection. That's a requirement of the trustees. That was done with no issues to report. Uh, the, the small items that come up, no disrespect meant when it's your house and your microwave breaks or your dryer breaks, it's a big deal. So uh, the ministry takes care of that as well. And then some of the projects that are in process, as was mentioned earlier, uh, head through the endowment, uh, repairing and replacing the aged AC units. Uh, we're still ongoing and talking about how we come up with a long-term fix for that. And then also, uh, two years ago, three years ago, Seth, I'm not sure. Ben and Heidi, there was a playground in their neighborhood that if the church would come get the playground, they could have the equipment. So the men's, United Methodist Men's Group went down. They deconstructed the playground, and the trustees committee is in the process of getting the individual pieces repaired, put back into a, a pretty condition. They were in a little bit of rough shape. And so hopefully sometime next summer, we'll have a new playground equipment up. So these are just a few of the items. The, the list is, it just goes on and on, the work that is done by the trustees. So thank you to the entire trustees committee, to John, Seth, all the work that you do on it, um, to take care of all the church properties. Thank you. I'm Lester Smith, and I'm, in, I'm basically the head of the, of the men's group. We meet on the fourth Sunday of the month at, at 8.30 in the basement at, before church. We usually have a small, small breakfast and coffee and discuss what we're going to do, projects we got started, and what, we're, what other projects we want to start, start. And usually we have John, Tom, and Ted Moser. We have Jim Abbey and Seth McCorpo and me are usually there to discuss what we need to do to help the church or help the community. And like Marcia said, we're given the opportunity to go down to Fisher's and tear a playground down. It wasn't no small playground, it was a great big playground. And with Steve Smith's help and Ted and Tom, uh, not Tom, but Seth and Jeff and Elijah and I, we went down there, what, three days it took us to get it all tore down and brought back to the church. Some of the stuff went to the church, and, but the, the poles that go to the ground, they came out to, to our farm where we have places to store them. And now we're in the process of getting them coated. So hopefully, maybe this spring we can start putting that back together. And the other project we had is, like my Marsha said, we spent one Sunday at the church, changing all the light bulbs in here, getting rid of all the dead bats, which we got some come back, changed all the light bulbs in the sanctuary, in the balcony on a Sunday afternoon, and, and uh, uh, Norm Alexander and Joe Moser spent the whole time up on the scaffolding. We just moved it for them. They changed all the light bulbs for us. All we did was move stuff around for them and get them ready for it. And also, with the help of Jim Abbey and, and Seth Corvo, we got that food box put in. That dining come up, guys, I asked you if we'd be able to do that. And I said, oh, yeah, we could do that. So we got a hold of Jim, and he, he graciously made it for us, and Seth put it up. And that's some of the projects we have done. And we, like I say, we meet, and we, if any of you guys are interested in coming, be here at at 8.30 on a Sunday, on the fourth Sunday, if it's a holiday, then we don't have one. 
But usually on the fourth, if we, if sometimes it's five Sundays, we always, we always keep it on the fourth Sunday. So everybody, all the men are welcome to come and have a little fellowship and help us out. Thank you. <clears throat> we who ha were the United Methodist Women are now called United Women of Faith. We meet every third Wednesday at 10.30 in the parlor, and we will be meeting again this Wednesday to nominate uh, officers and plan the budget for the next year. And uh, we have a program, usually every uh, meeting, and in, in addition to our devotions and mission moment. Uh, our last meeting, we went down to the community building, is that what you call it? And to pray for the community of Elwood the schools and the hospitals and so forth. Uh, our projects, well, I guess, let's say we have about 10 members and somebody said, well, have, if you're a member, hold up your hand, or maybe if you'd like to be a member, hold up your hand. <laughs> our projects this last year were uh, personal hygiene ki kits for the intermediate school, blankets for the nursing home, sewing kits for the food pantry, and Harmony House, our only fundraiser since COVID has been the uh, Dairy Queen, and we're very thankful for what they do. And, uh, but, we, but you can all participate by all just going in and eating. And we did get a pretty reasonable uh, amount of money for, for that. And then we made $54 when we had Cookie Sunday. <laughs> Our history goes over 150 years ago when there were six women and two of them were wives of missionaries. And they met in Boston and learned of the desperate need of women in India who could not receive any medical help or any education. And this included children as well. So our purpose is mission, not just local, but global as well. We give to the pledge uh, in our district for the global, and we also help support the Lucille Rains home in Indianapolis for homeless men and women who are able to work. Locally, we give to the Morissette Center, I think about $300 it was, Harmony House, $100, uh, the Community Meal, $100, and there were a few others. So we invite you to join us the third Wednesday of the month here in the parlor and everyone is welcome. I am not going to speak, um, and I just want to say thank you to all of you who have spoken today. Um, this, again, is Laity Sunday, and we thought it was really, really important to celebrate all the wonderful work that this ch church does. And as your pastor, I want to thank you uh, for stepping up Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and making us work because you are the church here. You are what makes this church work, and you do a wonderful job. And so I just want to thank each and every one of you who have served this past year. I want to draw your attention to um, the leadership slate that is in your bulletin. You're going to want to take this home. You're going to want to put it in your file, stick it on your refrigerator, whatever it is you do, because in January, these are the people who are serving on your committees. So um, make sure that you keep that somewhere handy so that when you need to know, oh my gosh, I need to talk to a trustee, where do I find them? Or I need to talk to a staff parish member, who are they? You'll have that handy. So keep that on hand. And again, I just want to thank you. I know we've ran over today, but we think it's really important that we share the great work that you have done. So thank you so much for being the church you are.